If you are a fan of the Dive Bar Rockstar podcast and would like to help support the show, there's a great way that you can do that and start a new fashion trend. We have a new merchandise page on the website which features t-shirts and hoodies that are available for sale on Amazon. Just click on merchandise in the top menu and all of the links will be there or go directly to divebarrockstar.com slash merchandise. Get started early on your Christmas shopping at divebarrockstar.com. Welcome to the Dive Bar Rockstar Podcast, a show exploring the lives of professional musicians of all types, touring musicians, recording artists, songwriters, engineers, bar bands, wedding bands, and anyone making their living in the music industry. Whether you've dreamed of being a professional or you already are one, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Eric Baines, and I hope that you not only find some entertainment here, but also some helpful tips, trade secrets, and ideas that will help you achieve your dreams. I realized the other day that on my last podcast, I said that I was going to take a few weeks off and uh, I don't know how it happened, but it's turned to seven and a half months and it's been an incredible journey. Um, I have a baby. The baby is here, Lennon Allen Baines. He's super healthy. Everything came off, you know, without a hitch other than him being two weeks early, but he was just excited. I think he just got excited. He wanted to meet everybody and uh, he's doing great. He's keeping me up late at night and early in the morning and the chaos is is afoot <laughs> but it's mostly awesome it's also made a little more stressful by the fact that live music is back and uh, which is a good thing and a lot of people are getting back to work finally after i don't know 14 months of lockdown and everything being shut down so it's an exciting time i've been out on the road it's been great seeing live audiences again and you know, I'm sure it's great for everybody to be back doing what we're supposed to be doing. My guest tonight, today, whenever whenever it is that you're listening, that's the beauty of a podcast, I guess, is an incredible singer, songwriter, producer, and keyboardist. He started as a backup singer for artists like Anastasia, Christina Aguilera, and Usher, among many more. Uh, you might remember him from American Idol Season 6, where he took 12th place. He's just finishing up an EP, and on this episode, you'll get to hear it first. We got a couple of brand new tracks, uh, one of which isn't even the final mix. It, it sounds awesome, don't worry, but um, the EP's not even out yet, but he agreed to give us a bit, uh, he's just a taste, just give us a taste. Um, he's got lots of music on Spotify to check out, though, including an EP from a band that I was in called Be Random, so check that out. He's recently written some songs for a couple of Disney projects, including a musical called Sneakerella, which isn't out yet. It's a modern take on Cinderella. Look for that. But he also wrote a song for high school musical, The Musical, The Series, which is on Disney Plus. And the episode just aired on Friday. But it's history making. It's the first LGBTQ love song that has been written and performed, you know, for a Disney show. So it's it's pretty big deal. He's also the singing voice for Oha in the new Coming to America movie, which uh, came out a few months back, but it's so hilarious. Especially if you love the first movie, you're going to want to check this one out. It's really great. Just a heads up that there will be some language in this episode, so maybe... This isn't one to listen to with the kids, but, you know, that's how we musicians talk sometimes. So, and it's a podcast, so, you know, we're going to do what we do. He's a really awesome guy. He's a super talented musician and writer, and he's a great friend of mine. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Brandon Rogers. So we're talking about your new EP, mm -hmm. which is, when did you, do you have a date? No, I don't because I wanted to make sure I had the songs first. Yeah, that's yeah, so, always good. So I've had no, a lot of CD release parties where like, the shit's going to be here in a week, yeah, but exactly. so, thanks for being here tonight. I've done those. You probably played it a couple of mine that, <laughs> that I did just that. Uh, yeah, no, I am. Um, but you were just telling me the story of how you... I lost so a song. you had a whole completed thing with a vibe and you got, how many songs on it? Five. Five songs. Uh, and... Six. Six. But you're songs. looking at this definitely almost like a record where it's yeah. there's a you want it to be a complete 
You want someone to sit and listen to the whole thing. Exactly. You and want it to be an experience. I want it to be an experience. Every song has a theme. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the most personal stuff I've written. Uh, just because, I mean, shit, I was in my feelings during like the yeah. pandemic, like during, right. during isolation. It's like being single mm -hmm. and living alone. And not being able to leave your house all together wow. was just a mix for me having to go see a shrink. Like it was like, <laughs> which 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 happened, which is which is, uh, I guess a po a positive negative. Like, is it one of those things like I I had never done but always wanted to do? But I finally I woke up one day in the middle of the pandemic and I was like, oh, this sucks. Like I just like I felt I was more depressed than I ever been in my whole life. Yeah. And so I'd already written a couple songs that are that are on the EP mm -hmm. that sort of you can sense that energy from it right um yeah. but um i'm just well i have I'm, a feeling that's glad. gonna be a lot of people's eps coming up yeah and i know? was trying to actually release a couple songs during the quarantine um ref that referenced the quarantine directly because mm. i didn't want to do that afterwards right good. i didn't want it like some of them they, they tackle the mood of isolation like one of the songs is about anxiety is my mm. song or it's called deep end uh, -huh. uh and it's about like wanting to connect with people, but not actually wanting to connect with people and being right. afraid to because I fall in too deep. And it's, you know, sort of, I guess you can take it two ways. You can take it too deep in emotional connection with people, or I fall in too deep in my own anxiety. Like, right. It's, they're both true. Control is a fantasy, hope is a tragedy, search in between the lines you're reading, I suppose, I could be less morose about love, but what if I'm right, 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 cause I cannot pretend to think that I can choose to swim or sink, I mean, Being too hasty, but I'm what the lonely made me. Yup. I was just talking about the idea that you had a song that you had co-written. Yes. I, and oh, and he, ah. you were like, hey, I got this EP all done. And he's like, oh, shoot, I sold that song. I sold that song, which is like, yay. Uh, right, you know, we sold right. the song uh, to a licensing company for use in TV shows. And they love it. And they're like, it's it's in their, like, their group that they always get placed in shows. Um, so mm. I'll definitely make some money off of it. Right. But I was just like, fuck like i'm like i was done mm. like all the songs were written now i just had to like clean up some vocals and tighten up the production get it mixed and mastered right and then i could like pick a date right and and start like deciding which videos i wanted to spend money on or yeah. if i wanted to spend money on or right. just i it, it was just i had crossed a threshold that made me feel really good so i felt really bad when it ended and i didn't know what to do and i knew it needed the energy that the song uh, that I lost had, right. and so I, I produced, a, um, I produced basically a reharmonization of the same song. Gotcha. I said this is how it started anyway, and I kept writing stuff, and I kept was like referencing my other one and trying to write and capture the moment, and you just can't. Like it right. just it rings false because every song has its own personality. Every song has its own sense of creation. And and a sort of source of inf inspiration. Yeah, you know? exactly. It comes from a particular. It comes place. from a place. It comes from a particular place that's good. sort of intangible. I, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I mean, and I write songs for a living for lots of different artists, but I'm kind of a nerd, and I like <laughs> I like big words. And my favorite big word is verisimilitude. That's awesome. Which means that's a great word. Which means having the appearance of being true, ah. and that's what makes any good piece of art feel 
connective to people who listen to it. It's that it's the verisimilitude. It's the wow. it sounds real. So everything I write has to start from somewhere true. Nice. And so me trying to duplicate rubber stamp this song that was true as heck mm-hmm. when I wrote it. Right. It's not going to work. So what I did was I sort of broadened my idea about the theme of that particular song because the theme initially was um, ambition. Mm. And so this one is more about like, like, and like, it's, it's like a conversation with myself about ambition and comparison to other people's careers and lives. You know, you, you, we always, we all fall on the trap of right. looking at someone who's the same age or younger. Cause that's usually what it is. If they're older, you're like, I'll get there. But if they're younger and like everything's popping off for them, yeah. you're just like, oh, motherfucker. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then, and yeah. then you run into the dangerous thing of being like, well, I'm better than, and it's like, no, 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 no. That's. And Facebook doesn't help. Yeah. It's not for you to say they're like. Or the and, current, any, anything, any social media, the fact that we're all glued to social media constantly. It's I, like, Instagram we're forced is, to do that. Instagram is curated. You know what I mean? <laughs> By you. Right. It's curated. You're not, most people aren't posting like the worst pictures of themselves. Right. Exactly. They're not posting yeah. themselves like waiting for their unemployment check by the, by yeah. the mailbox. You know, they're not posting that. Right. They're, exactly. Yeah. They're posting themselves, you know, in a seat with extra leg room saying it's first class. You know? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the, I, I didn't mean to get in the specifics about the song, but I just. Well, about, I kind of love it because it's an interesting lesson because I do. A, not a lot, but I do more, you know, writing for TV where it's like, we can't afford this song. Mm-hmm. They used to call them sound alikes, but mm-hmm. nobody wants to use that term anymore. Right. So my instinct in your situation would be like, let's write a sound alike. Yeah. But when you're doing something that's supposed to be art and not supposed to be the background while somebody exactly. has a love scene or something, you want to mean something. It's a hard place to, to go to. You yeah. And actually I mean? that's, I, I do the same thing. And yeah. And it wasn't <laughs> actually when I, the song I wrote was the original song was a quote unquote sound alike that turned turned out not to be, but right because I don't it it was like supposed to be like Anderson Pack, and uh-huh. I don't listen to an a lot of an I, mean, I know he's great because I've heard some of his stuff I love it it's super creative and like interesting mm-hmm. um, and cool progressions which yay yeah I, I freaking love yeah but basically they did the sound alike part in the track originally right and i just wrote what what was in what it came to me in the wind from that mm-hmm. from that track right uh, so i i wasn't doing a sound alike but that's how it started right that's how it started so this is a not sound alike of a sound alike <laughs> <laughs> right right that right. happens to be that i happen to like actually more i'm everything happens for a reason yeah i wrote and produced every song on the ep except that one Wow. And so that song got taken away from me and I had to write and produce the one to replace it. Right. So now I have an EP that feels wholly mine. So you've ri- you wrote everything. I wrote every song. I wrote and That's produced cool. every song. By yourself, I mean. By myself, yeah. Yeah. In isolation. <laughs> <laughs> While slowly losing my mind. Wow. <laughs> Firstly, I gotta get a little something off my chest Why when I shine, you think I'm trying to impress It ain't my fault, you stay bothered and pressed Yes, yes If you feel the type of way that I'm talking to you I'm not trying to make you feel like a fool But you can only grow if you know the truth See, we both made a magic You want it, you can have it But you gotta work, but you got to get you there You ain't the first one, I'm not being millionaire Stay focused, mind your business To your own beat Stop trying to compete Find your rhythm, get in where you fit in Follow your own lead Dance to your own beat Take over the streets Keep it pushing Can't nobody tell you who you're gonna be If you dance to your own Might seem like a- You have a You're one of the most eclectic writers You know <laughs> Uh, yeah, Eric and I were in a rock band together. We were in a band, and uh, you know, it was really, really awesome. Yeah, and probably the most pop big band that I've been in since you yeah. know, high school. You know, yeah. So for me, it was really fun. Anyways, yeah, but- and actually more poppy than me. Usually, <laughs> usually, I just 
I'm a hard person to categorize yeah. even for myself as like, who do you want to be as an artist? I'm like, I want to do like all the things I want to do. Yeah. Whatever that means. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you do it in this EP from what I've heard already, yeah. you know, because uh, that's what you were talking about progressions. And that's what you think, you know, where your song's going. Yeah. And then you don't you go somewhere. It's totally awesome. It's because I get bored with it while I'm writing. It, it. Yeah. And that for me is like my <laughs> most favorite music to listen to, you know, yeah. like because I mean, I don't know, I, I can get old and grumpy about how like I feel like <laughs> you music, old and grumpy. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> grumble, 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 grumble. <laughs> Edit it out of this. <laughs> edit it out of the podcast. But I kind of, you know, I enjoy. I grew up in the seventies and eighties sure. when like music progressed every time you mm-hmm. heard a new record. And I don't know that it does that anymore. I don't know that's really a part of the thing. So when I hear things that are are progressing, like mm. you, this is this well, feels progressive to me because I, I I get in a track. And I'm like, oh, it's yeah, it's like an R and B pop thing. And then you're going, whoa. That word, that's not R and B pop. That's this or that. You know, yeah. like uh, it's really interesting to listen to. It's, well, I, I appreciate it's that. It's like curry. It's just I, so much ooh, going on there. Oh man. yeah, just, like a, you just that, what ooh, spice that is umami. That? It's like it's sweet. It's spicy. <laughs> it's salty. Uh, no, um, but you know that just I mean that I came to it as my parents like to say I ca- came by it honestly. Right. In that yeah. like, you know, my favorite writers growing up were Stevie Wonder and. James Taylor, yeah, like, yeah. and the Beatles, and Bonnie Raitt, and yeah. like, so it was just a, it's a, a, a hodgepodge of, yeah. of musical identity. In that's here. what it feels like. It feels like you've got a palette, yeah, of a lot of different stuff, and you're just <laughs> you're kind of sprinkling it on there. You know, like, because sometimes I'll do something that's more like a pop or like something that's current feeling, but mm. then I'll dig more into the lyric. Right. Or, and you know, and then something that's a little lighter lyric, I'll make sure I make those in- chord progression interesting. Yeah, and that's not even for anybody other than myself. That's right, and that's one thing I learned about making this EP in particular, and me making music generally. But this time, I was like, I am a forty-three year old man. Nobody's gonna tell me what the fuck I'm gonna write <laughs> or sing. Yeah, like I just, I'm gonna write and produce what I want to hear. Right. Period. Yeah. And like I, I like I was like I don't have time to focus on like what the possible result is. I'm not trying to get a deal or sign like that. I mean, right. you know, we can segue into something else, which is, you know, the sort of democratization of the music industry through, internet. you know, through internet and, yeah. you know, companies like AWOL and, uh, you know, like PayPal and what's the gonna CD baby mm-hmm. and things like right. that, that sort of allow everyone who has the capability to put out music. Right. Like there's an up and which down. Is- more and more people every day too because the gear is cheaper yeah, you which, can do it on your laptop you know? which i like both high key hate and yeah. am very appreciative at the same time it's a tricky i'm glad for me because i am someone who has worked for years and we went you know went to college school for music been writing touring singing with people been on tv been not on tv dude i've been hustling for 20 years mm-hmm. and so for me it sort of frees me up to do what I want to do and then figure out how to get it out. Um, then the hard part is finding the audience. The downside is that it's just a sea of, it's it's a, it's a fucking Pacific Ocean yeah. of music. It's just yeah. so much stuff. So that in turn makes it even harder to get attention, especially when you're a fuddy-duddy like me who fucking hates posting on social media. I'm yeah. sorry, I curse a lot. You, you know this about me. <laughs> it's all good. It's okay. a podcast. That's okay. the beauty of oh, it. Oh, yeah, sweet. I'll warn people, you know, going in, and <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, I, Brandon We're says fuck a lot. Yeah, I, <laughs> I say fuck a lot. Um, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yeah. it's like yes and no. Mm. Like, please, God. Like, I want, I want people to shine. I'm not a... I'm not a person who believes that there isn't enough room for people. Right. Like I, I I can see that I just said about, you know, there being an ocean of people out there, which there is, but I also don't like the idea of gatekeepers mm-hmm. of people like labels and stuff, preventing people from doing that. So I, I, th- I you know, I, I constantly tell people we all got room to shine. Yeah. You know, if you can find your light, I mean, nobody's got 7 billion fans. So there's a, there's a market for you. Yeah. It's just, Enjoy yourself finding them. Well, that's the pr- that's know. the thing. It's just as much work to get to your people as it is to make great music, and yeah. it, it, that that's where the gatekeepers. Because I kind of go that's back and forth help. about it. Because to me, it's like an A and R guy. That was a talent. Those yeah. aren't just people that were preventing. They were people who could see something that people would like. Yeah, and exploit it. You know, yeah. and and of course, 
the deals were never fair. You know, you could, there's plenty of stuff about the record label system that was yeah. horrible, but, but the idea I've of been signed twice. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the, but the idea, the idea of qualified gatekeepers sort of keeps everything a little, at least there's a standard, you know? Yeah. But, but they so used to it, be able to control the gate. Like, and not, right. not just keep the gate and, and like see what's missing and, and get, you know, develop artists and all that stuff. They, because they were the only outlet for people to get out there, they knew what the hell they were talking about. Right. Now, I actually know some A&R people and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. Like, I mean, and some of them are, some of them are, some of them do. Right. No, totally. Yeah. And, and those are the, they tend to be like the people who more like our age, like around our age you know what i mean yeah uh and and i sound like i sound like an old man now um uh, just because i'm like these kids today yeah uh, uh -huh. but like like when i mean it happens a lot when i mean a and r and they're like 27 and i'm like sir <laughs> <laughs> please don't tell me about anything yeah it's tricky most of the kids i work with um mm -hmm. you know production and writing wise are 16 to 25 yeah you know my playlist when i get in the car is the Future hits playlist, not the current pop playlist. Right. Future hits. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I always want to hear what is getting the least amount of plays, but these kids all know it. Right. Yeah. They all know it already. The stuff that's yeah. getting lots of plays, they're they're over it already because of attention yeah. spans. Well, you know, top producers <laughs> talk about how like they have to think a year and a half ahead mm. because they're going to make that record and then it's got to get packaged up. Yeah. It's not going to come out for a year. And what's the, what's the sound going to be then? Yeah. The greatest are the ones that can call the next one. You know? <sighs> it, and you know, who knows, maybe most of the time it's an accident, but yeah, but, but if you're always doing the greatest, then at the same time, you're the leader, you know, you're the one actually pulling the rest along, I suppose. You know, you're totally right. I think for, at least for me, the goal um, you know, I got some stuff coming out that that may or may or may not break, but if it does, I hope it's because I'm I'm not trying to duplicate something I heard on you know like mm -hmm. on the radio. If if, my, if it makes sense, I'm trying to keep the sound, the current sound and the progression of it in my head, mm -hmm. while trying to do what I just want to do in right. a production, like for 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 an artist. Like I'm not, you know what I mean. I'm not yeah. trying to copy. Because I think yeah. that's where people make a big mistake. To me, it's very successful, for, very lucrative for them sometimes. Right. To like just com completely, like how many more trap songs do we need? Yeah, right. Like, yeah, and just totally duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Yeah. You hear the formula, like you're like four yeah. chords, spooky piano sound, pull it back, 808, yeah. and the same. And then the, the, everything and then, on the radio is Mumford and Sons, and now everything is uh, dubstep. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, and Quick, it's been Quick, triply hi-hats. And that's been happening since the beginning. Like, every yeah. song in the 50s sounded the same. You know, it's like yeah, you can hear the, the the changing sound as the eras go, but, yeah. but you're right. It's like, you don't want to totally copy. It's like, what you got to be able to, what's next? Yeah, know? what's next? I what, guess can I to, what can I elevate? What can I elevate? What can I... And Ele what can I bring to it? Because yeah, no one else is going to bring to it what you're going to bring to it, in theory. Yeah. I mean, I tell all the, the I call them the kids. That's how I know get noted. I tell, <laughs> this tell show's going to be awful. God, no, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I tell the people that I tell the people that I that I write with. Um, one of my beliefs is that nothing is original. Right. Everything, nothing is inherently original. Right. Everything is the culmination of everything you've heard, and what makes it original is how that transmutes through you yeah you know what i mean that's mm -hmm. so i think you can't spend too much time being like i want to do something crazy i'm like i guarantee you're going to use the same 13 notes 12 <laughs> yeah. notes excuse right. me yeah. as everyone else right exactly so you have no choice you have no choice because semitones don't work <laughs> yeah in the, in not the, in not the... in the western world <laughs> exactly and and actually to be honest even in eastern music it's usually a passing tone or something like that's right in yeah. between something. No one's like, like in the middle of a blizzard. Yeah, end. nobody's like <laughs> playing the F sharp sharp <laughs> half chord. Like, like, there's just, like no, nobody's doing that. Right. So, do you, when you're writing for other people versus mm -hmm. yourself, is there a difference there? Or you're always trying to be, you know, come from the same place. That, that I I try to be as consistent as possible. I'm definitely a little more discerning for my own stuff because it's just, it's different. It's coming from a different place. It's, I want it to be my own. I want, I want my own energy. I want to take my time and figure it out. And I, it takes me longer to write a song for myself. Now for other people, I've just sort of learned tricks. So usually the first half hour to an hour of a session sometimes it's mm -hmm. just me having a conversation. It's just me asking questions, shooting the shit, asking what's on their mind and yeah. 
and low-key taking notes while they're talking. Right. And I just sort of try to figure out, like, because like I said before, it, I try to stay consistent. It it has to be true. It didn't have to be like a true story. Like, we're not talking about biographies here, but it's got to talk. It's got to have some sense of true. Right. And it can't be. I think where a lot of people, songwriters, make the mistake is making stuff overly general. Um. And so it's so general, it hits nobody. That's exactly right. And so it's got to yeah. be, it, I, I'm like, no, make it super specific. Yeah. And then it'll feel like, it, it, it'll feel general because people will feel like they're seeing into your world. And also, by the way, we're all humans. And, yeah. Like, what are you trying to avoid? You really think <laughs> that your experience is the only, you're the only yeah. person that oh, that's experienced too spe- that Oh, ever. that's too specific for me. I'm like, no, dude. Like... <laughs> <laughs> so like if you go to watch a movie that has a really unique plot are you always like ah I, it wasn't general enough i don't it's, i don't know i don't understand but you know what <laughs> some people feel that way really? some people are like i couldn't relate i'm like uh, it's okay. iron man bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since we're talking about songwriting i had to talk about this song that you wrote and i remember the day that you wrote it because we had a band called b random we'll talk yes. about that too but and you came from the session I'm pretty sure that's how I remember it. And you were like, listen to this song I just wrote with this kid, Alec Benjamin. Oh, right. Yes. And I listened to it again today. And just in terms of coming from a real place, even like I'm literally bawling uncontrollably about a fictional piece of plastic. (laughs) And I'm thinking, what did I miss? Why is this happening? It's one of the most amazing songs I've ever heard in my life. I appreciate Um, it. I built a friend, it's called. And I don't even know. It's not yours necessarily. or I don't know if I can play it on the the podcast without getting in trouble. I am a 50% owner of that song, so so I I don't know. Yeah. So (laughs) I'd probably just put a link. But go check out this song. It's unbelievable. And it's on on Alec Benjamin's album. It's funny. Actually, we wrote it back in the day but he put it on his most recent album oh, at, wow. on the on the on the deluxe edition so which this is, is great. perfect timing yeah perfect timing which is great it's on a, a the, the, it was at these two windows or something like that oh, I'll put right, so i forget i forget what the name of the album is but something about two windows got you <laughs> uh, but anyway no the reason i think what you feel uh because i feel it even when i hear the song is because you hear what we talked about to get to that point he was signed to uh columbia records at the time He's not anymore. He's signed to someone else. But he was signed He was signed to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was feeling, he was 19, 18 or 19. He was feeling, he was lonely. And something had happened with his friend. And in my world, like one of my friends and my dog just died. Like, <laughs> like within six months wow. of that or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. And, and so we just had this moment and we were like, what if we wrote a song about losing a friend? Or being lonely, and then it became, and then we sort of wrote a screenplay ish, like not screen screenplay, but like an outline of a screenplay wow. for that. So, because because you have little time in a um, in a song, so you have to paint a picture that carries over to the next picture. Yeah, or else or else you lose them. You can't jump too fast. Mm-hmm. So we created sequences, and we were like, okay, we want to get here. He's, <laughs> we're gonna get here. It's, we're going to write a song about a kid so lonely that he creates his own friend. Okay, then the kid's that becomes his best friend, and then he goes off to college and neglects the best friend, and the best friend kills himself. And it, and it's a and let's it's make it a robot. So unbelievably so cool. So for kids, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, and that that last turn catches everyone off guard. Like, they, and then you're like, they, literally, I'm like, it's a piece of plastic <laughs> and an old cell phone. What am I? What am I crying about? Because it's about more than but that. But I think also the harmony is gorgeous. Thank you. Like you, you, you get sucked in right away because you're like, oh, this is a sad story, <laughs> and it is. It's, it's horribly tragic. It is, but but, it's so but, great. but in the middle, you think it's going to be happy, <laughs> like because it starts out, it's like he's sad, and you're like, oh, he's lonely. Well, oh, I don't think lonely. I felt that. Oh, it, it, because I, because of the first words are I built a friend <laughs> that's sad right yeah. there like already I'm like oh well you got I, it. you got me for well, you for got what, it you know you, you got it because it is sad <laughs> yeah. but we were thinking we would trick people into thinking that it becomes right it becomes happy and he's sated and then the rug is pulled from my <laughs> right <laughs> well that 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 one like there's one the turn in the way. lyric where uh you know this oh, we we had so much fun together Mm-hmm. We had to, we we thought we'd be friends forever, and and so the last time we had we changed one lyric, and we had so much fun. To, 
No, we knew we'd be friends forever is what it is, the right. whole song. Yeah, yeah. And then we the last one friends. is we thought, thought we'd, we'd be, be friends. friends. It's so amazing. <laughs> and it's just those little things. That's actually, yeah. strangely enough, that little turn. Uh, I do that in some songs because that's a country thing. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's sure. where I got it from. Listening, to, growing up, listening to country music, and yeah. and how they would shift two words in a verse here or there, and you get chills up your arm because yeah. it just changed the meaning of everything. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you liked. I'm glad you liked the song because I really loved that song. I, really, I mean, it won't, might be on my like list of top five favorite songs of all time. I appreciate that. It's one of my favorites. But speaking of like emotional songs, like uh, quarantine was a, a a challenge for you, a but a couple yes. of great songs came out of it. Yeah, and, I actually uh, wrote a song called about Quarantine. Called Quarantine Quarant Times. Quarantine Times, yes. Yeah, which, I, it wasn't the first time I heard that song, I mean, that, that term, but I think your take on it is so cool. Because uh, what I love about your, your sad songs is that there's, I don't even know if I'd call them sad, but when you're talking about an issue that might be controversial, maybe, sure. or, or at least serious, there's always this positiveness yeah. of it. And there's all, you're always sort of trying to make peace with it. Yeah, I know? think I'm an inherently po I'm an inherently positive guy mm. and I'm an inherently curious guy. And so I'm a firm believer of do you want to be upset or do you want to fix it? Right. Do you want to stay mad or do you want to fix it? Do you want to stay sad or do you want to fix it? Mm. I want to fix things. I want to figure out things. Right. And so I think you can only do that in, in songwriting when you talk about the journey of something. I can't just sit and wallow in a feeling mm -hmm. in a song. I have to work it out through right. the song. I feel like that, just to me, that's more interesting than just writing a sad song. You right. know, right. like I was, when I wrote Quarantimes in particular, I was sad and I was looking around and I was like, can we all do better than this? And mm -hmm. and so it became about that. But it's also it's it's like I, I try to ride this line because I don't want to be preachy either. Right. Um, right. Yeah. It's a you tricky, know, it's it's a, a tricky it's line. A... <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, just, you know, walk on <laughs> a tightrope. But I do it a lot. And I and, and sometimes I fall on one side and sometimes I fall on the other. But I I always try. I, and you kind of do it with questions, I think, is the, yeah. how you don't, you know, the Socratic but maybe method. we should open our minds in these quarantine times. Yeah, maybe. It's awesome. Maybe we should try. Yeah, that I didn't feel preached at. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate, I, and I love that you brought this song up, just because I that song meant a lot to me. I, and I, I did a one shot video against my wall in my living room. Right. And uh, I just, I don't know, I just really love that song, and I don't, can't even listen to it anymore because it makes me sad. Yeah. Because it takes me back to what I was feeling when I wrote it. This reality show is the worst. You and all you end up in a hurts, don't it do feel so isolated? Well, I'm kind of like that anyway. It makes me fall apart some days, but now they're all the same. Sometimes I don't even want to try. What's the use in doing well with just buying time? It's so overrated. We're players in a losing game. And love's become our solo play. No way to master fate. When they open up the gates and let the horses out, are we just gonna find another track to run around? Too many answers, no solutions, time is running out. It's our chance to end confusion, live without a doubt. That each other's the one thing that we can live without. Not the money that's been missing from your bank accounts. And maybe we should open up our minds in these quarantines. When I first heard it too, I just thought, "Oh, Brandon's going through a bit of a theater phase because yeah. it, it had sort of a musical theater kind of." You vibe know what's to it funny? Too. But I, then when I re-listened to it, yeah, I was like, "I, I don't hear it as much." I push you know? back Maybe on I that. I was going through the music. I push back thing. on that because I used I gotten that my whole life, and it's because I have a big voice mm -hmm. and because I like lots of chords. And you like chords, yes. and I like chords and melody. Yeah, chords and melody, and yeah. like. I don't know why, I don't know when one day that became assigned to musical theater. Cause it's not like I'm out there singing Oklahoma or some shit. Like yeah. it's, well, you know what happened is that slowly, but surely pop music stopped using. <laughs> yes, you're right. And now the only place you hear it is on Broadway. You're you right. Know? You're right. So, I just, you know, I went to college for jazz. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not do that, but 
because who wants to do that? I get it now. Uh, I, no, I'm trying to. Because no, I, I like, you know, eating. Yeah, I like paying eating the bills. and like paying bills and like, you know, not yeah. living in alleys. Um, that's terrible. I got lots of successful <laughs> jazz musician friends and I'm being a dick right now. I take it back, jazz. You, you taught me lots of things. Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> but so, I like chords. Yeah. Yeah. So where did you go to school? I went to the University of North Texas. North Texas. North there Texas. North Texas State. Or if you want to get uh, our our we had a you know campus jazz radio station like a lot like jazz schools do. Mm -hmm. And it, it was K N T U because it very easily could have been K U N T. <laughs> because everyone calls it UNT. Right. But not right, the radio right, right. station. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's like for years it was North Texas State. That's uh -huh. what they used to call it. Right. And then, and yeah. then, and then 20, 30 years ago, they started, call, like, all the signs and everything says UNT. Got you. So did you have a good experience there? I had a great experience. I have friends that uh, I'm still friends with. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is a blur. Yeah. Um, not because of drugs. I didn't <laughs> do drugs. I did smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> But not, I actually, no, I take it back. I didn't smoke weed during the school year. I actually had a rule about that. Oh, that's cool. I had to, I, I had to spend like, you know, how practice rooms are. Like you're right. in that, you see that practice room more than, more than school. Like right. more than school. It's like, you know, you have 20 credit hours in a semester. Um, and that's a heavy semester, mm. 20 credit hours. And you spend 20, 30 in your practice room. Yeah. Yeah. Practicing for like three classes. Right. It's great. Yeah. Oh uh, no, I had I, I learned a lot of stuff. I, I met some good people. Went to college with Nora Jones, which we oh, sang cool. together in choirs and, and bands. And, and you uh, went as a singer? As a singer. As a, well, I, I when I was when I got to college, I played piano, saxophone, and voice primarily. I played other instruments, but those are the three that I'd like was in ensembles for. Oh, interesting. And so when I got there I was pre med oh, for wow. one year. And then my parents, both individually, they're divorced, but they're friends, mm. but individually without talking to each other, were like, you seem miserable. <laughs> and strangely enough, my parents are the ones who encouraged me to switch my major to music. And it was, wow. it was no surprise. Like I went there to be adjacent to music. Yeah. I was like, oh, they also have a good, the school is great for music, but they also have a great pre-med program. So I'm going to do that. Got I'm going to be practical. That's interesting. Uh, and I was good at two things, music and science. Mm -hmm. And so... When I got there, I played those three instruments and I had to make a choice because I was looking at the sax players. I'm like, oh, if I do that, I'm going to have to only do that. And if I oh, play yeah. piano, okay, if I do that, I'm going to have to only do that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. but I'll sing in minor and piano. Oh, nice. So that's what I did. Yeah, that was, I was a little <laughs> bit in the same boat when I got yeah. to Berkeley. It's like, I got to pick. And I was like, well, the only one I can really read on, because I, I played bass in high school, but I, right. I didn't want to. So okay. instead of practicing, I was just like, I just learned to read pretty well and then I could just show up and do it. I didn't oh, so have to take great. it home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I, when I got to college, I was like, well, if I'm going to be successful, I should do something I can read on. Okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so I just picked bass, but like, I mean, it, it was always, it took a long time adjusting because in high school I would play everything for everybody. And, exactly. And now it's like, what? I got to spend how many hours doing this? Focus on one thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, I don't know if your audience is aware that Eric is a kind of phenomenal bass player and singer <laughs> and piano player and know. guitar player. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll go just with you on the it, base. Just take it. Uh, okay, just, take take it. It. just let it wash. <laughs> let it wash over. Well, I don't you. want the phone to ring and be like, "Hey, I heard you're a great, you know, guitar player." And then we're like, "But ah, you, you kind of studio, are, though. If I can get some takes, yeah. <laughs> don't, kinda... don't call me for your gig, but uh, <laughs> yeah. if you want, you want some tracks. You know, I got tracks for days. It's so funny. That's how I feel like um, about piano. People sometimes are, they're like, "Hey, you know, can you come and do this piano gig?" I'm like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> but if you need me to play piano on your track, I can do that. Give me some takes. Right. Like, exactly. I might. Yeah. I might even. You know. I can I can do a jazz solo on the piano if you give me a take right. because I'll write out the song. <laughs> just don't ask me to do it off the top of the dome. Like, right. I can't do it. I just I'm not built for that. I'm a classical player mostly. Right. So gotcha. dexterity without improvisation for my fingers. Yeah. But I could, but I had to take improv classes and whatnot for them. Not like acting improv classes. Yeah. Uh, jazz improv classes. But but I was like you know in in a room full of sax and trumpet players with a mic. Got you. And so I had to learn. Yeah. I'd, but I had to do all the, I had to go through all the paces. They did not hold back on me and it was painful. <laughs> well, it's good. But, but I learned. It pays off, right? It paid off, I yeah. think. I think. And it's like I use my, I use my degree and the things I learned in like the jazz vocal groups there passively. Like, as in what I do a lot, especially during the pandemic, I had to step up. 
uh, my production and my vocal production because performance was gone. Yeah. You know, just gone, like right. evaporated into dust. Thank goodness for like unemployment because yeah. uh, for a minute there, it was looking kind of touch and go uh, with my life and finances. But we figured it out and it, it, it the benefit of the pandemic is that it forced me to do some things that I needed to do in, anyway. I've always wanted to like level up past just, you know, playing gigs, just occasionally doing TV stuff, just, you know, just, I wanted to, I've been trying to level up. So it, it was mm-hmm. good because I got some good opportunities to play, to uh, produce and write. One of them is very, re- you know, distantly related to me, actually. Just, yes, uh, you yes. Know, a lot of distantly my life. Distantly in-law. It's, a, it's <laughs> yeah. an in-law of Eric's. Uh, um, well, that one, I can see. I can talk about I High School Musical, the musical, the, the series, series, which yes. is like a, a spin <laughs> Which on, you've done songs for too, haven't you? I have not, but, you've not? Um, you know, but my brother-in-law did a cameo. Right. Uh, my brother-in-law, Lucas Graybill, who was in the original three movies. Yes. Um, he did a cameo in the last season. So just watch, tune into Disney Plus for uh, High School <laughs> Musical, the musical, the series. And I wrote a song um, called I Choose You. Great. Um, whoa, no, no, that's not what it's called. Oh, no, you don't even know your song. Well, that's one of the lyrics. <laughs> oh, gotcha. It was we. I, it was a toss up when you're writing. You know, mm-hmm. part of writing a song is deciding what you're going to call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's actually called In a Heartbeat. Got you. Uh, in a Heartbeat. In a heartbeat, and that's uh, I'm really excited about that song. Um, there's also an upcoming movie called Sneakerella, um, which is sort of a take on Cinderella, okay. um, a, a new modern take on Cinderella. But it's mm-hmm. it's it's so well done. From what I've seen, I've only seen the clips around my song, but I wrote a song. I wrote a song that's performed in a Disney musical, like in that's a Disney cool. mus- musical movie. On top of so I, that's that's one of those things I got to do. That's one of those things that kept me from being in a complete like dark cloud during yeah. the, during the quarantine because both of those came happened during the during the um situation and mm-hmm. i vocal produced both of them Got so you. which means i did a lot of zoom sessions mm-hmm. which actually strangely opened up another thing that i started doing which was a niche that i sort of found which was tracking vocals across the country through mm-hmm. zoom and different applications i figured out how to do it That's in a awesome. way that I, a couple of people hired me to do it and nice. it became an ease. It, it just, it was just, it just, some things worked out. It taught me, taught me to use what you got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use I what think you got to try big... to push yourself forward. Yeah. And like, I think, yeah, at this point in LA anyways, if you don't have a studio set up at your house, then you haven't caught up. I mean, you, you know, you can't keep up. You You're know? losing work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's so many things. I don't, and I, I wonder how much of that is not going to change. You know what I mean? Because it's cheaper. I don't, you don't have to rent out a studio anymore. And, you know, if I'm going to do a session, I'd rather just call you and and uh, send me the files than have yeah. to go rent Capitol Records out. You know, 100%. I mean, <laughs> actually, I just did a session at Capitol Records the other day. <laughs> so they're open. They're That's open good. and at a lot of rules. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, I've done a few, uh, you know, big studio sessions since everything started opening back up. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just, it's been a little weird little, you know, when you're singing in a choir and yeah. everyone's got a partition between them. Right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you have to pull up your mask anytime you're not singing. Mm-hmm. And which, you know, I appreciate it. I'm not one of those people. I'm like, you know what, do what you got to do until we get right. But yeah. also like, well, as soon as they were like, take your masks off. I was like, <laughs> like you know, cause I wouldn't got that. I got that vaccine and that yeah. vaccine beat me the hell up for one full day. Yeah. And, me too. and so after that happened, I was like, I've earned yeah. the, the, the ability and the right to take this fucking yeah. mask off. I've got superpowers now. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> okay. Tell me, but tell me this. My friend brought this up the other day. Did you like, after you felt like shit, mm-hmm. when you came out of it, did you feel kind of like a superhero? Like not a superhero, but like, did you feel like, I felt like extra healthy. I, not me. No. Okay. I think, In my mind, I felt superpowers, but no, it was like, it was one day of, I don't even want to say it was that rough. You know, I, I, other people had it worse, but still it was like weird headache. And like <laughs> st- it didn't feel, I never had a headache like that. You know, yeah, what I mean? you just didn't but I feel, feel like right. It, it really, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I feel like it lasted like three or four days of just mm. like, not I'm doing stuff now and I'm yeah. cool. I'm out of bed, but it's just, there's this weirdness. I, I've never felt this weird before. I felt like the hottest of New York garbage for like one <laughs> full day, one full day of like, where I was popping Tylenol most of the day, mm-hmm. but I, you know, when you sort of 
take it and you realize if I didn't have this Tylenol, mm. like this would be, yeah, this would be the worst day of my That's life. That's what I did too. Yeah. Like I just felt like that. I was like, yeah. cause, because you could, I, I could feel it. Like I would take the Tylenol and then I'd like lay down mm. and then I'd wake up when the Tylenol wore off and I was just like, uh, like reaching for it. <laughs> and then after it came up, I think, I think maybe it was, a maybe I, what I felt was like relief. Right. Maybe I just felt like yeah. I had been, you didn't realize how much you were carrying that's worrying about whether you were going to get COVID. That's exactly it. You know, I definitely felt because I, I was like, Oh my God, like yeah, my blood pressure went down like yeah. 10 points. Like yeah. what the F? Like, I know. you know, I, I mean, definitely felt that. I think, oh. I think a lot of us did, you know, yeah. I, I, a lot of some, some people lost no one. Some people lost a lot. Some people lost whole families. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my uncle yeah. passed away from COVID. Like oh. my dad's brother. I mean, he was older, but still like, mm. like he thought he had a cold and right. then he just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Ugh. Yeah. Worse. So, so yeah, it, we don't have to go down that, that dark alley. That, <laughs> well, I mean, granted it's a well lit dark alley because everybody was. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, this is um, episode 30, I think. And this is the first show I've done in six months. And part of the reason I waited is just because like, I'm tired of talking about COVID that side of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, how do you have a music podcast when no one's working? You know, it <laughs> started to get a little weird to me. But Ricky's back, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, hey, so uh, what would you recommend the, when you moved to LA? Like, what's what's your thing to get gigs? And how do you ask that to a question when there's no and gigs like, to be um, had? You know? COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a rock star. I have to confess something. I I love books, but I I don't love reading, and it's it's been something that I've I've wrestled with since I was a kid. I, you know, I, I can read. I have read books, but they're very time consuming, and I've spent most of my time trying to build a music career, <laughs> which takes a lot of time. But one thing I definitely do a lot of is drive in LA traffic on my way to a gig. And there's a solution that combines those two situations, and it's called Audible.com. Audible has thousands of audiobook titles, and you can listen offline anywhere, anytime. The app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. And they have just a ton of music-related titles, like All You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald S. Passman, How Music Works by David Byrne, or Music Production Secrets by Calvin Carter. And you can get a free 30-day trial right now if you visit audibletrial.com slash rockstar. That's audibletrial.com slash rockstar. I'd like to take a second to thank you for listening to the Dive Bar Rockstar podcast. As a new podcast, getting the word out is a vital part of what it takes to keep the show on the road. Uh, or off the road, as the current case may be. If you would like to support the podcast... All you got to do is subscribe wherever you listen. And if you have an extra minute or two, please leave a review. You can also share and follow the podcast on your social media apps. Okay, enough begging. I hope you're having fun. And once again, thank you for listening. I don't even think I've seen you in two years. So. No, so no. I mean, well, like, like a... we were in bands together and, and then Eric, got a dope ass gig and like <laughs> bounced the F out and was just gone, like in the world and like flashing yeah. on our news feeds, uh, you know, on Facebook. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just so happy for you, Brad. I'm just, oh, I'm just okay. happy that it, that we all want gigs like that. Actually, some of the yeah. gigs I had when I first started my career, mm -hmm. like some of my early gigs were big, like touring gigs. Yeah. Like, Cause you started out as a backup I singer. I started as a background singer. And my first gig was this lady, Anastasia, who a lot of people in America don't know, but at the time, she had sold like 30 million records in Europe. Uh, and did you get that gig in L.A.? So you moved back I got to in, L.A.? No, I moved, okay. Because you originally grew I'm, up here? I grew up in L.A. My mom moved to Texas when I was in high school. I went to I went uh, to high school one year in Texas, 11th grade. I fucking hated it. And so I kept some friends, but I fucking hated it. Right. And I moved back here, graduated here, then flew back there, went to college. I would come back for every summer here. And then after college, I was signed and in a boy band. After the band, I, I moved back to, to L.A. and lived with my dad and worked at Blockbuster Video. <laughs> uh, and then while I was, and then I did this like September 11th charity thing. Mm. with It was called Unsigned Artists, Unsigned Heroes for Unsigned Art. Un unsigned Artists for Unsung Heroes. Right, That's what right, it was. Right, there right. you go. USA for USH. Gotcha. Um, okay, so we did it. And that is where I met Rhett. 
That's where I met Rhett Fisher, Rhett Fisher my best friend. Really great singer songwriter. Yeah, so dope. Former Power Ranger. Um, <laughs> that's, that's where I. That's where I met Rhett. My friend Charlotte Gibson, great uh, singer as well, and a pile of other other people. Ali, you know, uh, Ali Porter, who recently won the vo- Voice a couple oh, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. All these people, we all met that day, and we've been friends ever since then. And I bring that up because at that event, I met Charlotte Gibson, who was singing for Whitney Houston at the time. And we just connected. I didn't see her again for a year. And then a year later, she was working with Anastasia and remembered me and called me and asked me if I wanted to audition. And I auditioned and I took that gig. I would not have, I probably would not have a career where, I I mean, it would just be different. It would be wildly different. I can't say it would be bigger or smaller, but I think she's, she's like my sister and we're so close and she's an amazing singer, but she got me that first gig. From that gig, I got, I went from Anastasia to Christina Aguilera to back to Anastasia because Christina, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, dot, dot, <laughs> dot, 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 bye. Um, ah, <laughs> uh, gosh, I lovely girl. Um, <laughs> so I went from Christina back to Anastasia was her, with her for two years, then to Usher. Uh, gotcha. and then in the interim, just like the streets and Gladys Knight and Earth, Wind, mm. and Fire and all these little one-offs here and there because I got in with Ricky Minor and he does everybody. Gotcha, yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, and then from then it was on Idol and then, right. yeah. So it's like it, the, everything folds into something else and that's sort of uh, the theme of our conversation which is just trying to move to the next progression in your right. life. And yeah, because that's kind of like, they made a big deal about it. You were on American Idol. Uh, yes. Season six. Season six. Took 12th place. 12th place. Forgot uh, the words. Forgot the words. And, you Unfortunately. Know, I, no, no, no. You know, it's funny. I, I was talking about this with my buddy the other mm. day. Um, everything happens. I hate saying everything happens for a reason. I always say everything happens because it did. Interesting. Every, like, you know, like when people are like, Everything happens for a reason. I'm like, and the reason is that it happened yeah. because any other thought is futile. You can't yeah. change anything. So right. just learn from the past and move on because you can't, you literally, literally you can't, you just regret does nothing but make you feel bad. Right. Like, so yeah. it serves right. no purpose other yeah. than to hurt you. Absolutely. So I forgot those words. I've talked about it on, I, when I did the press after that, what was going on with me at the time. Um, I, I'm not blaming this, but. I had two herniated discs in my back uh, and I got voted off the show. What would have happened if I didn't get voted off the show? I had back surgery a week after I got voted off the show because wow. I had been waiting till I got voted off. Right. If I went two weeks longer, I would have been on the tour. Mm-hmm. So then I would have had to make the decision. Do I get back surgery or go on the tour? Right. Um, do I go on the, and I'm knowing me, I would have gone on the tour because I was aging out of the show. I was 28 when I auditioned. I was 29 when I was on the show. So I was, that was, that was it. it. That was one and one and done. <laughs> right. Uh, so what would have happened? Like, would I've been agonizing in pain on, you know, in a tour bus? Would I've had to jump off in the middle of the tour and, you know, have back surgery? Would I have more injured my back? Or mm-hmm. like, you never know. So yeah. like, that's why if you, if you were to go back and look at my, when I got voted off, I sort of smile and shrug my shoulders. I'm like, ah, like there was not a tear. Right. I was like, bye everyone. I can, <laughs> I can schedule my surgery now. Like, um, but, and I'm just, I wish my, I wish my ego and my, not ego in a way, the way that people think, but my, my ego and sense of pride, pride is a better word than ego. I wish mm-hmm. my pride would have allowed me to share it while I was on the show. Right. I was just so embarrassed. It was my first real injury as a human. Wow. And the only people who knew were the producers. And every time it came up, I asked them to remove it. Interesting. From, you not use the footage. Right. Anytime it came up, like anytime they saw me get up and I like sort of got up slow and like limped away. I was like, could you not show that? Like, wow. and I could have been using it for sympathy. Like, I mean, knows? now, have you seen the show recently? Have you seen it? Yeah, I do, it, I do watch it now. Yeah. Because it's a whole different show in my whole opinion. whole different show. Now I love watching it. Before I, it was just Simon making fun of people. It yeah. Was like, here, let's, who are we going to bully this week? You know? Yeah, he only bullied me the week I got voted off. Every other week he was <laughs> yeah. nice to me. <laughs> uh, he, but now I, I feel like if you're on the show now, they would make you use that. That would have been your, your yeah, backstory. Your back, like, backstory. Come see out in a cane and like <laughs> yeah. stand up like, I believe I can fly. Like, <laughs> like just still standing up out of wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually but love this show now. I love yeah. it. I think they got some great great talents on there and the they talent. always get rid of like the most talented person around the third week 
Yeah. Like the the, the best, funny. like the person who you is like, to me, the uh, the objectively best singer right. somehow yeah. gets cut yeah. like early and the judges, <laughs> you know, hold their, hold their faces because yeah. well, America's going to do what it does. But uh, what I was going to make the point of like your story on American Idol was that you were a backup singer yes. and you had kind of given it all up to pursue your dreams. And mm-hmm. it, it's always something when I think about going on a show like that, not that I was good enough or whatever. I've auditioned. I never auditioned for that. Cause I sure. aged out, but um, it's just like the idea of like, well, I would do this professionally. I feel weird about it, you know, but you were just, you were like, yeah, but I want to, I want to do my thing. And they, it was, it's just cool that they embrace that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's cool, but it's also, I would like to preface what uh-huh. I'm about to say with, I had, really good experience on the show. I had no issues with drama. I got along well with the producers. I performed at the finale. I mean, the, the original when the show was supposed to end finale. Mm-hmm. So, right. uh, so I had a good experience in the show. However, it's television. And so narratives matter. Right. Like for instance, I wasn't the only background singer that season. Mm-hmm. You know, I might've done the biggest artists, mm-hmm. but the girl who came in third place, the wonderful Melinda Doolittle, she was also a professional background singer. And once they sort of pegged me with that, I knew it was going to follow me. So every comment, anytime I didn't do what they thought I was going to do, it was like, you're not a background singer anymore, Brandon. Uh, I was like, I know that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Did you like it or did you not? Because I'd like to go. And you know me, I can't hold my tongue. I have a hard time with it. Um, And so I had to hold my tongue. And because I didn't want to get, you know. That's interesting. uh, Yeah, but it, and and it it even showed itself once in that, me and Miss Charlotte joke around it because actually my friend Charlotte, who I brought up, who got me the background singing, was a background singer my season on Idol as well. <laughs> oh, Just coincidentally. Right, yeah. Because she, she had been doing it for a few seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to sign a waiver. I had to get Ricky Miner to sign a waiver because they ask you if you know anybody in production. Right. And, and I had to be like, I know every single person on stage. I, right. I have worked with every single person, person in the band. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them. But it worked out because they didn't have any bearing on who did what on the show, like who won or didn't. Right. Um, obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but um, I remember I was doing it. Me and Charlotte talk about it all the time. I was singing a song and apparently maybe I did too many runs or something in a song. And Paula Abdul said, um, you're in the front now. You don't have to do any more of those background runs. <laughs> and I turned, I glanced back at Charlotte and Charlotte's like, like she's she's like <laughs> and, and so we got off stage oh and we, we both God, got went up to each other we were like what the fuck is a background run a background run <laughs> she said those background oh runs and that, and that actually that is the moment when i was like oh this is they're just, i'm just gonna be the background singer right, for the rest right. of my fucking oh, life oh now i know my character now i know my character yeah. um like and even when like going get it when we got into the top 12 and the top 24 show i remember I'm, i've never thought about this i'm standing there next to melinda And Ryan Seacrest is like, is there room for two background singers in the finale, Uh, you know, to be in our finalists? Right. And uh, yes, there is. Cool. Thanks. Like, (laughs) you know, just like, but the way they framed it, it's to amp up tension. Like, they can't possibly let both of them do. Right. But I mean, gotta have some drama. Gotta have a little bit of drama. I mean, not to be weird, but there's like, there was one other black guy and and we both looked at each other and we were like, you know, only one of us are coming, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we just shook hands. We were like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were right. Yeah. <laughs> we were right. Only one. Yeah. There can be only one. Uh, no, honestly, it was, it really was a great experience. Yeah. And it felt, it always felt fair to me. Like there was always mm. talk about um, this or that, but ours was actually yeah. the first season, especially um, after there was drama about contracts and stuff. Like Kelly Clarkson originally had issues with the show because of her contract and stuff like that. And for me, all respect to everybody, that's coming from a bunch of freaking amateurs who have never seen a record contract before. Mm, and they're like, this is bad. Yes, it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. you know, but it's no worse than like when mm. I was like signing with Arista when I was 21 years old. Yeah. No worse. Yeah. And actually a little bit better. So like our, what I was going to say was our season was the first season where we got like, you know, they put the top 20, top 24, or top 12, I can't remember, in like a boardroom, right? And then mm. like, four different law firms did like a little spiel spiel for us. And then we got to choose which lawyer we got to negotiate our contracts. And then we designated people within the top 24 to like get information from everybody, see what we could push 
mm -hmm. the contract and move and whatever. So we got to negotiate our contracts uh, because we got to negotiate our contracts as if we were the winners. Right. Because they didn't know who was going to be the winner. So we all got input on it. And actually, it was kind of sort of fair. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it was That's cool. I don't cool. even know if I'm allowed to talk about that, but I don't care. Yeah. Say it. Did you sign an NDA? Um, it's got to have expired by now. <laughs> I mean, I've been, yeah, been. And I don't think there were the rage back then yet. It was. I don't think I had an NDA. Yeah. It was 14 years ago. Uh, you know, an another difference between the show and then and now is that way back then we had to close our social media mm, because people had different levels of social media. So they thought it was unfair uh, oh. and it was new. Like, and yeah. we're talking about MySpace. Right. Facebook did not exist. Right. So. Right. We're talking about MySpace. <laughs> right. When I say social media, it was basically just MySpace. Mm -hmm. We had to get MySpace and then any records we had out had to be pulled from the shelves. Interesting. I mean, from new production. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but now Where now it's just now the it's like it's it's just the opposite. They're yeah. like leaning on people's social media. Yeah. They're like, you know, vote on social media. Yeah. And I'm like, how is that gonna be fair? But um, your season also was Sanjaya, who uh that was an interesting test of the system. The I sweetest like. boy. I made him cry once. <laughs> oh, no. I never talk about this. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I just, we were a few weeks in mm -hmm. and he was like really living on the hair and and being a sort of, he's got a beautiful voice now, but even then it was a nice voice. It just wasn't like, he didn't care. He was 15. I wouldn't care right. either. He was 15 years old when he started on the show. 16 mm -hmm. when he got voted off. Um and I, we were at dinner at the re at the hotel restaurant, and I just remember he was there with his mom, and I just said, you know, a lot of us here are taking this very seriously. This is a, you know, this is, this is a big opportunity for a lot of us. Some of, yeah, I'm 28, you know, buddy here is 27. Like we've all been doing this for a while, and mm -hmm. it doesn't make us feel good to see you not take it seriously, especially because you're getting so much attention. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I kind of made him cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> But he's a lovely wow. guy. Oh, I'm sure. I'm like, I'm, I, I, don't, I can't say I talk to him regularly, but we're still friends. I got a number of friends on Facebook, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, wow. yeah, I just, uh, that was That's... a weird season. Yeah. But we got along so well. And it wasn't his fault. It wasn't you know, his it was fault like either. Just got... That's why I didn't mean to make him cry, but I yeah. felt he had to hear it. Right. Oh, no, absolutely. You know, because yeah. I was grown. Uh -huh. And yeah. he was a kid. And yeah. so sometimes grown folks <laughs> need to talk to a kid. <laughs> You know? No, that's amazing. And thanks for giving me the exclusive. Oh, yeah, that's that is right. exclusive. I've never told that to anybody ever. And I did a lot of press after the show. <laughs> like there's wow. footage of me doing Ellen that you can find on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I did. I, oh, I've God, seen that. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, it's great, honestly. I mean, you you yeah. were super poised and, you know, you, you look like you, you knew what you were doing. And, I got accused and, of being too polished. Here. Ah, see, and I but that's see, the thing about that show. They but want, I could also they see, want to see the change. Yeah. You know, it's TV. I can also see that though, yeah. because there was a, um, you know, I was, ah, what's the word? I have grown into actual confidence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've always been confident, but it was like a cautious conf confidence, a confidence that I, hoped wouldn't hurt anyone's feelings or get and step on anyone's feet. I didn't want anyone to think I was like conceited or, or, or arrogant or anything like that. I, mm -hmm. and I'm so very careful and not that I'm like more conceited or arrogant now. I just don't care because I know I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I'm I, I, like, I can think I'm good and not think I'm better than anyone at the same time. Right. That's, they're two different things. Yeah. And actually to name drop, do you, the person who told me that was Justin Timberlake. <laughs> It's <laughs> true story. Wow. I was on tour with Christina and we were backstage. He was, first of all, I stand, I see this is me hanging out with the kids. Uh, <laughs> I, I stand Justin Timberlake all day because he was nicer to my parents than he had any right to be. Wow. And when I tried to thank him for him, he told me, and he said, well, you don't have to thank me for having a conversation with somebody. And, wow. and I was like, right answer. Like in my head, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> uh, and he was just lovely on tour. Because uh, cool. it was a Christina and Justin tour. Got you. And then I did the Grammys with Justin without too long after that. But anyway, uh, but he was really nice and he told me that you can be confident and not think that you're better than anybody else. Right. Uh, That's amazing. And I'm like, I'm keeping that. Because even now you just apologize for dropping Justin's name, but name dropping means like, 
I'm going to bring this up to impress you. Nah. It may or may not be true. What you just did was give me an experience. Sure. But the, your insecurities, <laughs> just what you're talking yeah, about, no, it's you're a right. perfect example. Like, there's no reason to apologize for having a great experience with Justin Timberlake. You know, it's funny. <laughs> you know I, mean? I, 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 I played you a song that I wrote today, and actually part of that is the first line of the song is, why is it when I shine you think I'm trying to impress you? Uh, and I think that's there's something... There's something to be said about that. That's the part that's hard to shake because we've both done cool stuff Mm -hmm. just as a, as a factor of our lives. Like it's just, we've done cool stuff, Mm -hmm. but it's just our lives to us. Yeah. And so sometimes you feel some kind of way talking about your life and your experiences and how, because you don't want to, you don't, you know, they're cool. And you're not bragging. You're just talking about your life. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, I spent yeah. seven years touring with people. That's yeah. a lot of yeah. stories. That's a mm-hmm. lot of experiences. It's probably more experiences crammed in those seven years than the 15 since I right. quit, since I actively quit singing background, mm-hmm. which I don't regret. I, I miss the money. And that but, was my question. But you I know, don't regret it one bit. Yeah, that's cool. Because I also don't believe in gr- regret, as I said. Yes, I don't believe in it. I don't, I feel like that's not, nobody should do that to themselves. Right. You can, you can learn, you can feel remorse, but regret yeah. is imagining that you could have changed something. Yeah. You can't. No, I'm totally the, exactly Back to the, the future. Same I might feel guilt about some things. That guilt I've is done, fine. You know, no, I mean, guilt, remorse, I'm not proud of. Guilt, but, remorse, that's fine. But I don't regret them. Yeah. Regret is, no. oh man, I wish I wouldn't have. Yeah. Keep wishing. Yeah. You know, you're just and maybe like, if I was homeless, then I might feel differently, but you know, <laughs> right. it all ended up pretty good. So yeah, like, you're going to uh, make yourself, make yourself feel like shit and, <laughs> and put yourself in not a better and not, you're not going to put yourself in a better position to get out of your situation Yeah, by make, by regret. Yeah. No guilt can do it. Shame can do it. Mm-hmm. You know, growth can do it, mm-hmm. but not regret. Regret's yeah. that one. It just it serves only one purpose, and that's to make you feel bad. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. I, I want no part I of that. it. I I was thinking about in golf terms sometimes too. It's like, you know, I don't know if you play golf. I've never not. played golf before. Okay, no, I'm a, well, I, sometimes I, you shank it. You I, know, sometimes I, oh, I know sometimes ty- Tiger Woods just shanks it into the woods. Yeah, but the thing is, it's the next shot that matters. Right, it's always the next shot. Oh. Like you might go into the woods, but. You've got, you've always got a chance. You I know like what I mean? That. It's like, it's about choices sometimes. And like, you just got to make the better choice next time. Yeah. Don't look back. Look exactly. Forward, you know? Yeah. It's like, like we're like, all trying to get to the green. Yeah. A good, <laughs> hey, amen. A good, a good example of that is just like when you do something and some, and you say, well, I won't be doing that again. Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's a good way just to, yeah. oh, okay, well. That didn't work. Won't be doing that. Right. And yeah. that's, and then you move on. Mm-hmm. You, I, cause I could have, I probably spent a week wallowing after idol, after I got voted off because not af, not immediately after, cause immediately after I was like the next morning press 6am, uh, later in that day, flying to New York for press, mm-hmm. Regis and Kelly, uh, all the TV shows there, flying back to LA, doing the Tonight Show and Ellen and all that stuff. So you don't have time to freak out then. Right. And you perform on all these shows. But then I got my back surgery and I was two weeks alone in my apartment, you know, in my house at the time. I was renting a house with two roommates. And mm-hmm. uh, that's the only time I like, l- like wallowed f- for a little bit. Like I've just been like, man, I wish you wouldn't have got my words and all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I go back to what I said in the interviews after I forgot the words. They were like, "Were you nervous?" I was like, "No, I don't get nervous on stage. It's not. A, I've been singing for fucking ever." Right. And <laughs> like, I just forgot my words. Like, which, right. I was like, Michael Jackson has forgotten his words. Prince has forgotten his words. Madonna has forgotten their words. Yeah. It just happens. It just happened to me while I was being judged for it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so I, do I regret it? No, because. Do I wish it wouldn't have happened? That it would have been neat. It would have been great. Yeah. But it did. So yeah. what the? Yeah. You know yeah, what, what's the use? But if I, the only when I was down and like actually bedridden for a week for two <laughs> weeks that I you know did I actually like feel bad about it? But right, right. Because then after I healed, I performed in the at the finale. Yeah. With a tube in my back. Right. Under my shirt. Oh. Man, unbelievable! <laughs> yeah. See, and that would have been a good. You would have gotten some more airtime if you had used the. I just story wish I at, cared. You know? 
<laughs> I've said this for years. Yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. I cared about being famous. Right. I probably would be. I just never have. I like that is singing. So interesting. I like singing. I like writing songs. I like making music. I love performing. That's what I love to do. I don't care if I'm famous or not. But the mm. only problem is in order to do it the way I want to do it, I kind of have to be. Right. Uh, so, But I never chase fame. I hate that idea. Mm. I, I like the idea of being good at something and people finding it and being excited by it and then spinning that. I just, I hate chasing fame. I just, it's wow. weird to me. I, well, this is an amazing conversation because we were in a band together called Be Random. Yes. And... Um, you, it was kind of you, you yeah, solo sure, first, yeah. and then we it turned into yeah. a band. And in the um, in a couple suggestions, somebody said that because they you know suggested the name, and I was like, I don't mind changing it. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, I like, but I, but probably for me, just so you know, like just the best original band I'd ever been a part of. Oh, dude, thank you. Know, you. Just the music was so high quality. We put on EP. You know, at the I time love that were, AP, by the you way. You were producing, you know, you were, so it was like a different producers on the thing, but yeah, on every song. Great. You know, it's, I it's appreciate all really, it. really, no, really you know, cool. actually, I, I, I co produce every song because I would Got start you. it, then give it to a producer. Got you. I would start it and then be like, can you shine this up for me, please? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and you the guys songs are really the cool, really Thank eclectic. You. We did gigs. It was fun. And then the whole thing lasted probably three years. And then, you know, I got the gig with Dwight and that was kind of one of the things that yeah. left too. Cause Dwight just works all the time. Yeah, so dude, it, it was like, like literally bye. Eric you know? got a gig and it was like, <laughs> all right, so I guess we're done. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and I wasn't, and honestly, it, but the, the I, problem is we weren't, we weren't like selling out arenas or anything yeah. like that. And I would have loved but, to, and I thought our music deserved it. Yeah, me too. Big but, time. but I have to say where, where I'm leading up, you know, one of my frustrations at the time, it, it probably wouldn't have lasted that much longer for me anyways, because I was starting to get the vibe. Like this is the best band I've ever been in. And I don't <laughs> feel like there's an adequate effort to like, I don't feel like we really, what you just said, I could, I feel yeah. like I could sense that. I don't know that you really want this or, or it's not, it's, you only want it if it's going to be convenient. And st I've been in a million bands yeah. before. It's not convenient. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, it, and it's not necessarily, I'm not even trying to hold you accountable no, no, or anything, no, you, but it's interesting that you I'm say not, that because I'm it makes precious. it make more sense to me. Yeah. I'm you know not precious. I mean? I'm not precious. <laughs> no, I, I get it too. I get it. And I think it's not about, it's not about convenience. It's about, if we would have put out music and people immediately responded to it, yeah. I wouldn't have, I, but that's I what I mean. That's that's convenient. Yeah, no, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. You but know? but but it's not because we put in a lot of work to get it. Yeah, but to make it. But the amount of work that it really takes to get yeah. the amount of followers that you need. Yeah. It, it, you gotta get in a van, you gotta sweat it out with each other, you gotta share rooms. Oh, you, you, you know, know what's you funny? Gotta... That's and that's what we can't do as adults. Yeah, exactly. That's well, and that's like as I tried that. That's what actually what I did. Me and do you know Zach Hexum? Mm-hmm. Zach and I went to yeah, college yeah. together. He's, my, he's like my brother. Yeah, we were, I'm godfather to his daughter. Oh, right, like cool. He's his oldest daughter. Um, yeah, he but was like, in Drake Bell's band, and I was in Corbin's band. We did a double bill one summer. Yeah, but before the summer before Idol, my, mm -hmm. my Idol, Zach and I went, Zach, Zach me, and Charlie Paxton, mm -hmm. Paxton went across the country in a, in a van and like did small venues doing like my original songs, his original songs, and Charlie's original mm -hmm. songs and had a blast. Uh, but then I came back from that, like, like broke and <laughs> <laughs> broke and tired right. and, yeah. and all those things. And so every time I've tried to put out music, I, I just never have, I wish I had more money. Yeah. Because that's it's always, the cause, problem. cause that would have changed our situation mm -hmm. because then we would like, like, I remember we shot a video, mm -hmm. um, on the roof. Uh, in LA right. and that shit was dope yeah. and then my cousin who shot it was just was like oh I didn't like the footage Ugh. yeah after all that time we yeah. got it together we had a fucking drone like it was yeah, dope the drone was like so I was cool. waiting and the song is dope yeah. And, 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 you know, most importantly, yeah. the song is dope. And yeah. everybody brought their part to it like which one was that? That was Shoot the Moon. Shoot the Moon. Shoot yeah. the moon. Yeah. I remember Eric I, I used to say this about you to Marie and all this stuff I was like Everybody in the band, like the song would not be the song without the people playing on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a true band, like a true band. Yeah. Like I, you know, somebody, it, 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 Sasha, because love Sasha. She's Sasha's one of my best guitar player, Sasha One of my best friends, Sasha, Sasha Biratella. Um, But it's taken him some time, but he used to ask me like what to play. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't fucking know. I'm not a guitar player. Play it. Right, right. Like, just figure it out. And then, like, I would never be like, hey, Eric, could you play it like this? I'd be like, right. here's the song, Eric. Do what you do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do what you do. Because, yeah. you know, Chad. And then Chad Wright on do. drums. He's our first <laughs> first episode on Die Barrage. Right? <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah uh, it's just, just... I, I was, I was, I was swimming in riches. Like, I was really happy to have you guys there. I was really grateful to have such great musicians. But and you were also funding it, which is expensive. Yeah, you, you but, know, I, but as best as I could. You're editing the video. Yeah. Like we I'm, did do another video for Finish Line that was oh, really, I love that. really, really cool. That was really cool. Um, I remember you mad at me because I only put myself in the in the um, uh, the lyric video. Uh, uh, well, I'm mad as a well, no, we're not mad because it wasn't because it wasn't even intentional. It what was I like, was bummed about is that the lyric video has got forty thousand things, <laughs> and the the video with all of us has ten. You know, and I shouldn't be bummed about ten thousand well, views. You know, but what, I was just like, how did that happen? Because what, happened what I, here? because what I should have done in retrospect, <laughs> what I should have done is when I saw that and noticed that trend, I should have just printed the lyrics onto the original onto the video. Original one. Yeah, yeah. But I never thought about doing that because at the time the whole thing was you know make a video make a lyric video yeah like two right. two things right dude, that yeah, are different absolutely. yeah um and well, besides i mean exposure is exposure and you worked your butt off on both of those things like i was just in awe of like <laughs> how do you do this like it looks so professional and i appreciate you, like taught yourself you i'm a learner some camera gear i'm a learner i am a I said this earlier, I'm a naturally curious guy mm-hmm. and I like to fix things. My, I'm Bruce Rogers' son. I have my dad's son. He builds things. He's He puts things together. He figures out how they work. So I refuse to be defeated by any program. <laughs> like, like, and I'm all, and I'm also pretty good at computers. So, I, and you, if you've never, you've edited things before, but when you edit video, when you dive into it, it dive into it the, to the degree which I had to for those videos and all that stuff, you mm. figure out how musical the process is, mm. especially when editing a video, like how rhythmic and yeah. how like, it just, it, it, it really opened up some for me. I, I directed That's a cool. few videos after that. Like, awesome. I mean, all mine, but yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I just wish she, you know, I wish I had the confidence at the time to just call my cousin and tell him I will fly you here from New Jersey yeah. if you just give me the fucking footage and I'll and I'll edit it. Right. But I was so because we even got shut down by the cops. Yeah, it was like, great. It, it was, was great. so <laughs> living the dream. Yeah, man. It, was... it was great. And it's one of those things. It's like, no matter what I spent, because I had limited funds, Mm -hmm. I couldn't get people to like hear it. Yeah. Because when they did, they liked it. Right. Yeah. But it couldn't get people to hear it. I paid for ads. Yeah. I paid for like, like I wanted to get a PR person and they were like, that's $3,000 a month. It's expensive. I've done it. Don't waste your money. Yeah. And I was, and that's what Maria, my manager says the same thing. She's like, unless you can afford, you know, Ogle VBWR for 10 grand a month or 15 grand a month. Right. It's not worth it. Right. Cause the little magazines and the little like blurbs, they're going to get you, you know, shit like people, listeners, we got a spread. We got a write up in frigging variety. 
Wow. Like, yeah. was it variety? Yeah, I think it was variety because my f- my That's... friend interviewed it. Uh, like, not interviewed it, but she reviewed it for me. Right. Because right. she was a friend. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, can you review this? And we got it. We got a write up on, yeah, on the yeah. website. No. I vaguely remember. And nary a hit. Like, I know. It's well, just, it's but goes full circle back to the beginning of this conversation. Where yeah. It's like there's such sea of people out there and it's a sea yeah. of how do you get seen and like, you know, it's it's really hard. And it also reminds me of the record label conversation of like, that's why you get <laughs> fucked. Yeah. Because they have the resources yeah. to put you out there like you can't do by yourself. A rec- you de- uh, for people who don't know, a record deal is basically a bank loan. Right. It's basically they're loaning you money in in the form of time and actual money and promo- promotional um power and leverage all those things yeah. that the cachet that comes with being signed to a major label yeah. they get all of that and then you pay them back for it right and oftentimes and you'll you don't usually s- get an advance you get so, an advance but you don't see another dime right until so you want to make sure that advance back. is large because that might be the only money yeah. you ever even right. see right make know? sure it's large or small or really small and with a commitment for them to spend, like, be, well, yeah. cause so you so you end up actually recouping right. the money, because the problem is yeah. is that you have to recoup the, the 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 advance and the money they spend. Yeah, right. So if you get a million dollar advance and then they spend half a million on it, and you you're like all excited because you made a million and a half dollars yeah. in sales, you ain't gonna dime. Yeah, you're just now gonna start making right. some money. But you got a million bucks. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, true. But true. Uh, but you know. I don't know. Sometimes it's fifty grand. Yeah, you know? sometimes, you're going to be able to like times you're going to live on it for a year, yeah. and then you're probably going to be done unless your record, you know, breaks. So I don't know. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, I got I got a buddy. It's one of those things. I was always like, you know what? Get fucked the first time because then eventually <laughs> your label will be over, your deal will be over, and but you'll have exposure and they'll spend all that money on that stuff. And I got a know. buddy who spent like who I mean I'm not going to name any names obviously, but he got like a hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar advance for a publishing deal because he had a couple hits with big artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and like seven, eight months later, he was emailing me, asking me if I could find him a gig. Yeah. yeah. You know, because not that he was out of money, but he started to see the end of it yeah. and was like, uh, and he hadn't recouped yet. So yeah. the success he had started to get was, you know, you don't get a dime until that yeah, money right. comes back. Yeah. But, well. um, this is, this is fun. Yeah. And I was just thinking, I'm like, you know what? We kind of got to wrap, but um, yeah. we're going to have to have you we, back because there's so many things to talk. We haven't even talked, you know, quickly, actually. We have okay, to talk quickly. about the arguably, you know, one of the coolest things that you did during the uh, COVID is you're and, and, uh, coming to America, too. Oh, yeah. Like massive. Um, that's so actually great. a cool story. That's a cool story that I will try to say really, uh, just, really quickly. During no, the pandemic. During the pandemic, I think we talked, I don't know how I missed it talking about stuff doing in the, that we did in the pandemic, because during the quarantine, I got a call to um, arrange some vocals, to arrange and, and vocal produce some, um, actually, scratch that. I was, I was called to do guide vocals for Eddie Murphy. Which I was so excited about because coming to America one is like my favorite comedy of all time, <laughs> uh, special place um, in my heart. Um, but so I was so excited, and they was like, you know, didn't pay that well. But I was like, I don't care. I'm just gonna do it anyway. And then I start getting into it, and because I am who I am, and I'm kind of a completionist, I call the guy back, and I was like, How deep do you want me to go with these vocal productions? And he was like, Just do what you do. And I was like, Okay. And I did it. And then uh, I sent it in and I got like a call like a week later and they were like, yeah, we're going to use your vocals in the movie. (laughs) Uh, Like all the backgrounds, all the harmonies on that song on Get Off, it's a Prince song. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, You've heard of Prince, right? Vaguely. Uh, Vaguely, yeah. Um, It's a hack. He was a symbol for a while, right? (laughs) I think he was a symbol. (laughs) Yeah, no. uh, I know his symbol. I'm not not familiar with him as... Yeah, Prince, also known as like the goat, like (laughs) one of the greats. Um, But anyway, so I I do all these harmonies, all these arrangements, and then I sing the lead doing an impression of the guy. And apparently once they got it, the guy, it's been 30 years, the guy's... This guy's like, I can't say this. Right, you mean like the guard guy who in the original movie... She's your queen to be. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. That guy... Yeah. Uh, so I go in doing that, uh, that sort of inflection on the on the vocal, and they just kept my vocal. I, and honestly, I did not know. So until... that's the original thing you sent them. Yes, you didn't go back in and recut no. it. No, when... that's the wow. de- that's the demo I sent them. That's so awesome. Um, 
Um, and also they like they had me do a guide vocal for Eddie for uh, there's a memory when they're telling a story and they go back and they and you hear it say to be loved to be right. loved. Yep. It's me doing an impression of Eddie Murphy doing Akeem oh, because that was me doing my guide vocal. They kept it. They used it in the movie. Wow. So that's two time two things in the movie. Wow. But the, um, I, like, like I was saying, I didn't know either, and I didn't tell anybody really because things get cut all the time. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, I and honestly, I thought they were only going to use my harmonies. Right. I didn't. I. What, what, why would I think they would use my leads? Right. In place of the character who's in the movie who actually sang the original, the thing. original thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm glad wow. they did because it was really cool, and I got a shit ton of like Spotify listens because of it. Nice. Like, like I, I didn't get a whole lot of followers because I need to. It's one of the reasons I'm. I need to release this damn EP so I can, so people have something to listen to. But I um. Yeah. yeah, it was like Brandon Rogers, you know, with 150,000 f- listeners or something in that particular month or something, right. which is way more than right. I normally get. So I was I was glad That's to get so it. So cool. Well, um, it was awesome. I mean, we were I was watching the movie with the family, and it's like it's, I knew you were involved, but I didn't know exactly. And you know what. my voice, so you yeah, exactly. Like, as soon as that started, I'm like, "That's Brandon. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it it's so crazy, cool. and it's so centered." And yeah. so now all of us, you know, I'll, out of nowhere, I thought I was just singing harmonies in this thing. And then, you know, one of the biggest R&B stars is Tiana Taylor, mm-hmm. um, who plays the, you know, the daughter who's right singing. Right. She's the other person who sings in the song. Mm-hmm. And now I've got like, you know, the first track on the album says featuring Brandon Rogers and <laughs> Tiana Taylor. And, That's um, so cool. Uh, whatever. I forget the guy's name. The Jer- uh, Jermaine Fowler. Right, right, right. Or something like that. The, the guy who plays Akeem's son, long mm-hmm. lost son. Um, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it just, it really was an ex- extremely humbling experience. And I hate when people say that, but I actually mean it. Uh, uh, see, it there just, you go apologizing again. Sorry. Right? There's just no reason. Listen, <laughs> we're all works in progress. Yeah. Um, and sometimes things are just humbling experiences. It's yeah, okay, you know? <laughs> it, it, it was. It was like, it, it, it was such a big deal, like. And to be um, a part of like, I mean, that's just, it's, it's, it's movie a part history, of history for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I everybody. Wish, it was really good as a movie. I wish it was like, uh, I wish it was rated R. Uh, we thought the same thing. Because you could tell how careful they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was like, if you're going to gonna sort of pay line. tribute to a, a movie before, then to a movie go there, you know? That is a hard R for language, <laughs> yeah. nudity, and yeah. Yeah. raunchy com- comedy. Right. So this yeah. one is funny, but it's like, it's all funny that you can watch with your parents. Yeah, it's all clean. Yeah. yeah, it's all clean. Yeah, it's up. a family movie now. But. Yeah, it's much, much, much more family. But I'm so glad I did it. This has been so amazing. Like, yeah, it's been so. It's just been I, great I really to catch up with you. you. Come and, and being a part of it, you know. And I think people will get so much out of your thing. And I've always just had <laughs> nothing but awesome times playing with you. And it's been way too long since we've made music together. In I fact, know, dude. you know, we, we wrote a song called enjoy the pain. We, maybe we oh, should, fuck uh, yeah. maybe we should finish it up and, Okay, well, we'll talk about that when we close the... Uh, and then we'll have you back on, on and we'll do... We'll, we'll air the song. Fuck yeah. Let's we'll let, do a mini episode. Well, let's talk about... Um, wait, Enjoy the Pain. Did we record that here? And that was my other house. I mean, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I love that song. <laughs> uh, I listened to it again the other day. And, yeah, uh, I haven't listened to it. Do you You have to send it to me because I have to find it. I will. I'll send it Because I, you. I'm like... 200 songs past that yeah like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like literally yeah. like because because it, i was really in, in my fantasy too i'm like well we should just book a, a b random gig oh god just for fun you know i don't even remember I the song i don't either like, i mean i guess i gotta learn <laughs> you them, wrote them I, I just sing it. <laughs> but anyway i really appreciate you coming on man all right and thank I you i have nothing but the ultimate respect for you, you as, too, as a singer and a songwriter and and uh, it just makes me really proud to have you as a part of my podcast. Dude, I appreciate it. I, 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 I am grateful that you had me on and I'm grateful to be asked. Everyone likes to be thought about. So when, yeah. you, when you thought about putting me on the show, it made me feel good. And I appreciate yeah. it. Awesome. Thanks, man. So I didn't mean to come across like I knew what verisimilitude meant. I think I was on my way to a joke, but I never really got there. But I don't know. I didn't know at the time, but what a great word. Now we all know. It's awesome. I really loved his story about the coming to America situation because it's just an example of like any opportunity you have to be great, be great. You know, even if there used to be a thing where, oh, it's just a demo. We're just putting out a demo. But 
those days are long gone. The demos of especially music, if you're trying to sell songs and stuff, the demos sound amazing. And sometimes those are what end up being the basis for the record or parts of that demo might end up on records, you know. Um, and there are still appropriate times to do an acoustic guitar and a voice, but even that, it's got to sound great. You know, it's got to sound like a record. And, um, it really paid off for him that time. You know, he, that stuff was used in the movie. I also wanted to add, I think I've talked about choosing bass because I could read in college on the show before, but, uh, we were talking in particular that you'd have to make choices in college and kind of focus on one thing and you know i remember coming out of high school where i was doing all kinds of things and playing all kinds of instruments and then now i got to focus on this but at the end of the day 30 years later in this industry i play all kinds of instruments now and i was able to do everything that i wanted to do but i always had those skills that i got in college to sort of i don't want to say fall back on but that's you know sometimes i think of bass as my day job and that's those are the skills that I got because I chose those things. And that, that I think is really still important. You're going to get there to where you can do everything. I mean, every day of my life is different. Uh, you know, all kinds of music projects are, uh, are different that I do. And, and I eventually got back to being versatile and, and, and doing every musical thing that I want to. But in college, it was important that I, that I chose. If you don't know who Sanjaya is or remember who Sanjaya is, Sanjaya Malakar was a contestant on season six, American Idol, and he was actually 17, not 15. But he made it to seventh place and probably really shouldn't have based on his talent. And America kind of used him to take over the show by voting for a, a, a mediocre singer every week. And Howard Stern and some other groups had taken up the cause. And it, it was kind of, it was funny, not funny. He also had some pretty spectacular hair that uh, didn't really help the situation. At any rate, you can watch his performances on YouTube and decide for yourself, but I would suggest watching some other performances like Brandon's from that season to compare. And as a funny ending, apparently the ratings dropped 9% the week after he was voted off. Soundalikes are basically what it sounds like if, if a, a movie can't afford a particular song or a TV show, then you write a song to sound like that song. But now they use more of the term inspired by because they're afraid of being sued for copyright infringement. So if you're pursuing licensing opportunities, don't use the term soundalike. NDA stands for non-disclosure agreement, which basically means keep your mouth shut, don't say anything, and they're all the rage right now, so be prepared to sign one if you're working with a major artist or a TV show, or I've even signed them to play high-profile wedding gigs. A&R stands for artist and repertoire, which, uh, you know, A&R guys used to be the scouts of, of the record labels, and they were the people you'd harass to try to get them to your shows so that you could get signed and become huge rock stars. Brandon also mentioned that he was doing vocal production or he, he pro vocal produced some things. And I feel like that's a new role that's been carved out in the last decade. Um, it used to be sort of the job of the producer to do all that. But now there's actually specialists that come in and just do vocal producing. And he described it as a combination of arranging, coaching, and engineering. Um, so he would come out, and then that also includes like comping the track, which is picking all the best takes and putting them into one track and then tuning it up. And uh, so if you're a vocalist and have coaching experience, it's another also great way to make a living or another service you can offer. Well, I hope you enjoy the podcast, and I hope you listen to the next one. I'm a Wow, you've made it to the end. I'm hoping it's because you completely enjoyed yourself and are now filled with knowledge and inspiration to move forward with your dreams. If that is the case and you would like to stay informed of new episodes, live events, and general news, please go to divebarrockstar.com and sign up for the mailing list. If you have any questions, comments, corrections, or complaints about anything you hear on the show, please email me at fanmail at divebarrockstar.com and you may even end up on the show. We at the Dive Bar Rockstar Podcast, with all of our hearts, thank you for listening, and remember, it's all about dreams. Dreams.